There was a teacher in Britain and there was a teacher in France. Both of them insisted on wearing a full burqa and a veil in class. Can you see why that's a problem? Because if there's a child in the class who's good at ventriloquism, he can make her look ridiculous. <laughs> you can all leave now. <laughs> I didn't say that. Yes, I did. You can all leave. Do you like playing with the audience? Because you, you, know, you kind of mentioned a lot of those push points that can uh, at least get one member of an audience to walk out. Yes. But do you, en do you enjoy that? Is that part of a kind of a game that you have? I do, at the beginning I talked about a, a lift operator and there's yeah. a bit about pressing buttons. So that, that is a thing I don't like to spell out during the show, but there is a, a sort of a lower theme uh, about button pressing, pressing and so on. But um, no, I don't deliberately <laughs> like sending someone out of my room, but at the same time I see that as, as part of the cost of, uh, of making an effort and saying something um, that you feel. Settled, really, I got married last year. That's the noise of an audience who don't really give a shit. <laughs> we don't know her. She's gorgeous. I've done really well. I've got, I've got a lovely wife. I'm, I'm very happy. I'm in love. I love my wife. Don't know how to react to that, do you? Because that's not standard. Standard what we expect from a comedian is my girlfriend just left me. But no, sorry about this. I'm in love. I love my wife. Do you know why that's cringy? It's cringy me saying that because because an audience don't know how to, what am I saying? I'm saying that in an area of life, possibly the most important area of life, I'm better than you. <laughs> I never set out to offend or upset, but what I do set out to do is more and more, I'm 45, I'm just honest. This is how I feel about things. This is the language I use off stage. Mm. I'll use the same language on stage and, uh, and it, try and represent myself as best I can. And now obviously if the mass audience don't like that, then I have to address that there's a problem with me. <laughs> but if, if, uh, if overall it's going well, I, I'm, I'm willing to accept losing a few people. Feminism. Feminism and all the bollocks feminism put out over the years. Women can multitask. You know that? They can multitask. Not true, though, is it? Women can't really multitask. You know why they thought women can multitask? Because they can iron whilst watching TV, whilst talking to a friend on the phone, while, whilst cooking. And ladies, you can do that. But know this. If you turn off the TV and stop nattering, you get a lot more cooking and ironing done. <laughs> oh, how far can we push this? Do you think comedy's ever a finished product? Um... Well, I think it can be. I think, I think there's lots of acts who consider this is a, a definitive piece they've written or, or they work on a show. And I admire that. I, I wish I had the, the time to, to, to work on a show for a year or two and then come up here with a, this is my finished product, yeah. all done. Every line is word perfect. But in fact, every time I do that show, there are a mass of wordings that will change each night. Don't get me wrong, I respect women. I love women. I do not talk to a woman's breast because I know women don't like that because I've read that a few thousand times. Although a little childish part of me does think it's unfair and that if a woman puts her breasts in low-cut tops and push-up bras, if a woman decorates her breasts and frames them, I should be allowed to stare. While she's talking, I should be allowed to stare at her breasts and say, carry on, I'm listening. I'm multitasking. Carry on. The, the odd thing what i found is that the longer you spend in this business, the more professional you get, uh, the more work you do because you go to another festival. So, for instance, I, I just came yeah. back from New Zealand and that was only two months ago. Yeah, and that gives me two long months long. to get a new to start writing a new show and, and get that out. So, uh, so no, it's... Um, it's, it's, it's backward. You'd think the longer you spend in business and the more uh, experience you get, the more you get to rest on your laurels. Mm. But in fact, the more gets the more required you of you. This is my impression of the guy, and it's roughly, it's roughly what he said. Uh, so, my wife said, does this skirt make my bum look big? And I'm like, no, bitch. It's the cake that makes your bum look big. <laughs> <laughs> well, of course, it went well with the audience. Rather than listening to him thinking, lame. Lame and lazy. Lazy and lame. Do you know why? Because if you're going to degrade a woman, put some effort into it. <laughs> Does this skirt make my bum look big? Listen, you fucking rhino ass. <laughs> Listen, you fat imposter, whoever you are. Does that skirt make your bum look big? Yes, because that skirt is made of cotton and not magic. <laughs> but you like pointing out hack things in comedy. I actually do not. I do. Okay. I, I actually, I've got to tell you, I don't. Um, I do. There's two moments in that show where I mention yeah. a, a hack piece because it's relevant because I'm talking about laziness. And so what I wanted to do was not criticise my own profession. I don't mention any names. Mm. But what I wanted to do is just uh, use comedy as an example. It is really working with my own world. Yeah. Because that's what I know the best. And, and in my own world, I can see where laziness uh, in comedy uh, triumphs at many gigs. And it, not, not in a... I think if that, that guy I was talking about in the show came to Edinburgh, I think he'd suffer under the, uh, the critics' hammers here. Oh, it's fantastic. <laughs> Guys, lay naked on the bed, legs apart. Have your partner scrape her nail up the inside of your leg. When it reaches the top of your thigh, about here, the testicles move away to the other leg. <laughs> they, do. they do! 
It's a safety response. They don't, it's not like a fucking hell. It's like that, it's, a, it's, it's more of a Cremisoteric reflex. How the hell did you find that out? Um, is that how you say it? Cremisoteric oh, reflex. Oh, look at you. Beautiful, isn't it, the cremisoteric <laughs> reflex? What? How? What? I'm going to try it later. No, what it was was uh, I, 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 I mentioned the uh, testicles breathing yeah. bit that I did. I mentioned that to an audience and they had no reaction whatsoever. So I had to look that up on the internet and then followed links. One link to, took me to another and then eventually I found out about the cremisteric reflex and I was like, that's amazing. And I talked about it on stage that night mm. and there was a, a doctor of anatomy who came over to me and gave me the full facts and told Jeez. me why it happens and so on and this is kind of, and, and uh, I couldn't believe I never heard of it. And then, then told audiences and couldn't believe no one else has heard of this. <laughs> why are doctors doing that thing where they bang your knee and it goes up? This one's much more interesting. <laughs> yeah, that's definitely. And slightly yeah. disturbing at yes. the same time. Yes. So I went to the doctors and you made my balls move. It's too bizarre to see a part of your body moving that you're not controlling. <laughs> it's a joy. So if you've got a girlfriend or wife who, who doesn't know about it, then bring her into the bedroom. Write yes or no here. <laughs> <laughs> Scratch your nail up my leg and ask a question. <laughs> Consult the oracles. <laughs> okay, um, so obviously you're staying in a hotel, uh, not even allowed to open the windows. Yep. Health and safety is pretty annoying, but is that health or safety? Neither, neither. It's, it's to save the hotel money and it's an absolute lie why they're putting, uh, putting that out as a reason. They're not having, uh, you know, that many suicides a week. The same as they have that, you know, that when hotels have that sign up saying, yeah. uh, leave the towels on the floor. I'll tell you this real quick you're running out of film, but leave yeah. the towels on the floor and, and they say it's for the environment. Like, you know that's not true. There is no way, in all countries where, in countries where people do not give a shit about the environment, yeah. where they have no interest in climate change, but every hotel manager in the world puts that as his priority. So no, it's bollocks. And the same as that hotel windows thing. And, uh, and it's a small point, but it represents something much bigger and we should be able to open a hotel window. Warning, this window is restricted for your safety. The one below says, warning, for your safety, this window has been restricted. <laughs> Just in case you don't get the message. And call me a pedant, but on top of everything else, what annoys me is the word warning. You don't use the word warning to warn people they are safe. <laughs> a lot of the time, comedians are making fun of something, and we're all, what we're doing, an audience is all agreeing that that particular behavioural point is stupid. Is stupid. Yeah. yeah. And I'd like that to... And you wonder why they go, that was really stupid. Yeah, yeah, yes. go do it. I'm going to go bang my head against the wall. I'd like to feel that important that it makes a difference, <laughs> but I'm quite aware that as a comedian, really, I'm just a jester. Thank <laughs> you.